Peace, ladies and gentlemen. Shalom, Akiam, and Akwaf. I'm just coming through here once again with another video or segment or whatever you want to call it. Please excuse me. Um, I know I need to enhance the sound quality. I don't really have a, a great mic. I'm just working with what I can right now, but I appreciate all your viewership, all your subscriptions, and all the support. But um, I wanted to do this video because, you know, it was just at the forefront of my mind in regards to the spirit that I'm in, in which I feel the need to convey certain utterances of the scriptures as well as just a certain understanding of the scriptures to enlighten brothers who haven't been privy to certain information. So um, I wanted to just start with Romans. So let's go and get the book of Romans. So in Romans 3 and 3 it says, and this is just in regards to people who don't believe in the Bible and people who are presumptuous in regards to wanting to shut down somebody who has a strong belief in the scriptures. Um, people who just regurgitate the narrative of, oh, the white man wrote the Bible without even substantiating their belief by at least reading it. It's like a lot of people just regurgitate shit. A lot of people just say what the next man said. Nobody even takes their time out to substantiate a belief or disbelief. Everything is just, oh, he said it, so I'm going to say it. It's just a regurgitation. Nobody really has their own mind in this world. Except for the very few people who are willing to, you know, see the forest through the trees, so to speak. So Romans 3 and 3, where it says, For what if some did not believe? Sure, their unbelief make the faith of the Most High without effect, meaning... So just because you got certain people that don't believe, that don't mean that the Most High ain't true. That don't mean that he ain't going to persist in truth. It's just you just a, a person that don't believe. But at the end of the day, you believe in something because in order for you to have a disbelief in it, then you got to believe in what you believe in. Like you have to have some sort of belief. Like the Most High is not what people think he is in regards to conventional wisdom. It's like you go to church and you're being taught about God. You're not being taught the truth about God. You know, and I only say God for conventional purposes, but he is the most high because he is only one. See, when you say God, that can be conflated. You feel what I'm saying? You could be talking about Osiris or, or, or the Bacchus or something like that. You could be talking about the Baphomet. Like, these celebrities, when they say they, they thank God, when you hear songs like uh, God's plan and all that stuff, that's not talking about the most high because they don't know the most high. It's only the understanding as far as understanding the Most High is only given unto the elect. It's not given unto everybody. And the reason why I'm making this video is to convey certain messages to the hopeful elect. It's not for everybody. Not everybody's going to get down with the program. Not everybody's going to understand. Not everybody's going to be willing to come to the true understanding of quote unquote God. You feel what I'm saying? Who is a separatist. Who is a quote unquote racist. Who chose a certain people that he loved to be a king and a priest on the earth. By giving them certain commandments and a covenant that was codified by differences between us and other people. Because we're special people and it's spiritual. But a lot of our people don't want to embrace that because it's prophesied. Now, without the understanding that it's prophesied, it's also because people, a lot of our people are stubborn, prideful, and aren't willing to humble themselves. You feel me? And that's just that's just the bottom line of the, of the fact that it is what it is. So it says, yeah, for what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of the Most High without effect? God forbid ye, let the Most High be true, but every man a liar. Meaning let the Most High's word stand and let, man, let man's word just be what it is in regards to it being up in the air. You feel what I'm saying? Like, we know that you can go to anybody in regards to information, but... The most high in regards to what he stipulated for his people is always going to stand no matter what. No matter how you twist and turn it, no matter what you believe. There's a truth when it comes to the Bible. There's no, there's no belief. Like it, it's, it's just a truth. It's not subjective. It's like it is what it is. It's just certain people don't have to understand it because it's spiritual. Some people, certain people were not given the spirit to understand. That's why it says for many are called but few are chosen. Because it was only given unto his chosen to understand. You know what I mean? So, um, just for context. And I know I've, I brought this scripture out before, but it's important that we bring it out again. So people could continue to understand what the Most High is about. 
And the Most High has been about this. It's not just some shit where you go to church and they tell you, oh, the New Testament and the Old Testament is different. No. The New Testament is just a continuance of the Old Testament. All it is is a new covenant. And it tells you that in Matthew 5 and 17. So let's just get Deuteronomy 7 and 6 real quick. Where it says, for thou art in holy people. What does holy mean? Holy means separate. That's what holy means. Like literally, that's the etymology of the word. It means separate. It goes back to the Hebrew word kodash, which means separate. For thou art in separate people unto the Lord thy power. The Lord thy power hath chosen thee to be a special people. Special. What is what is the term special denote? Special denotes difference. Special denotes particular, peculiar. We are a peculiar people. But a lot of our people don't want to embrace that. They want to ingratiate themselves with these other nations of people. Like when you read the book of Genesis chapter 11, it goes into the Tower of Babel. And basically, it just gives you an understanding that diversity isn't what necessarily strengthens a nation or strengthens a world. It could in some sorts in regards to every every nation contributing. But at the same time, it weakens you because... You forsake your culture. You forsake your code of conduct. You forsake your your uniform understanding of what you're supposed to adhere to in regards to customs and so on and so forth. You feel what I'm saying? We were given that, but being that, you know, we disobeyed the Most High in regards to our people, our forefathers, we've been put into a land where we don't really understand who we are because we're in we living in a big a big play, like a big delusion, a big. It's just a matrix, you know, just just for lack of a better term, it's the matrix. We literally live in a world where we think that what we see and what we know in regards to what we've been taught is, is true. We live in a narrative. Damn man, like I said, it's about 85 to 90% of what we've been taught is bullshit, is deception, is subterfuge. It's not real. We have to understand that through the Bible, through the lens of, of, of looking through the scope, and understanding the nuance of the scriptures, then you understand life. If you don't understand the Bible, then you're not going to understand this world. You think you understand this world because of what you've been taught in regards to conventional wisdom, in regards to the narrative of the deception of the Bible and different religions and so on and so forth. Not understanding that God is not dealing with religion, that God is not dealing with everybody, that God is not about you coming as you are. No. The Most High is restrictive. The Most High is about laws, statutes, and commandments. That's it. It has nothing to do with no religion. It has nothing to do with you being uppity and none of that. It's all about just following the commandments that he gave us. That's it. And the thing is, like, we're, we're, we're separated from that because the Most High gave us a certain, a certain set that was, that, was, that, was, that, was, that was disparate from every other person on the earth. Because we was the first ones to come from the soil. So he gave that to us. Because he loved us. It tells you that we were fewer in number. So it's not about it's not about numbers with this. That's why all these other religions, they're popularized by numbers. But the truth is always going to be minuscule. The truth is always going to be scarce. It just is what it is. So let's go into um, this video real quick. We're going to go into this video real quick. Um, we're going to start with the second Exodus, part one. It's a very, very good video, very informative, and I'm just going to cover it throughout. So you guys bear with me. If you're, inter if you're interested in um, watching, then I thank you for that. If not, then God bless you too. One second, you guys. One second. Let me take this off real quick. This bass booster because sometimes this kind of messes up the quality, the little bit of quality that I have. So I just wanted to take that off real quick.
When the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and lo, an horror of great darkness fell upon him. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterward shall they come out with their great substance. This notion that black men are to be feared, and black men and black people are scary, is hilarious to me. Because historically speaking, white people, you guys have been the most dangerous motherfuckers on the planet. You wiped out the Indians, you kidnapped niggas, you repressed us for 400 years. We brought blacks into this country as slaves. We never intended them. Now we have to understand nuance. You notice the slave narrative is just based in psychological programming. Like, not a lot of, not, there wasn't 150 million people on slave boats. Like, most black people were already in the Americas and also they came from other um, regions in Europe. It wasn't just in Africa where it was black people. Like, there were black people scattered abroad after our diaspora in 70 AD. So, that's, this is why it's important for me to cover this because some of the stuff in this is not true, but for the most part, it is true. It's just all about, you know, understanding, you know, nuance because most of the stuff is just based in a narrative that we've been fed. So I don't begrudge the brother who made this because some of, some of his stuff he's coming with is from the pro-black angle. And I'm not about being pro-black. I'm about being pro-truth. That's what it's about because black is just a color. Black is not a race. To be anything other than a slave. But they began to grow in number and in power. And eventually they fought their way to some freedom. So we became even more cruel. And to keep our black Americans down, we lynched. But yet they rose. So then we used the welfare system, the criminal justice system, to... to Keep them down, to contain them, to destroy them, but yet they rose and they're rising. Then we built prisons and jails to hold them, yet they rose. And so now we are doing exactly what the Pharaoh did at the end, sending out a decree. Facing exactly what the Egyptians faced when they refused to let God's people go. So, I'm going to say this to my white fellow Americans. That the bloodshed that is on its way is not on the hands of our fellow black Americans. But is on our hands. We are the ones that are refusing to let God's people go. We are committed to do our very best, not just to go to Washington and talk about justice or else, but what is the or else? Because every time God sent a prophet, in the message of the prophet, there was a threat and a warning. So it is today. Yep. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? When you think about Masha, when you think about Yahweh, when you think about Paul, you feel what I'm saying? It, it was all met with a threat. You know what I mean? And the biggest threat of all was Yahweh, aka Jesus Christ. He was put on a cross because he was a threat. So what does that tell you about the people that come from Yahweh, the black man? You have to understand your power, so-called black man. You got to understand your value. You got to understand why you so special and why you so different than any other people on the earth. A lot of our people just don't understand why they're so special. Or they can't even conceive their, their, their gifts or their royalty. You feel what I'm saying? Or their value. It's, it's really sad. That's why I'm so grateful that the Most High put the Spirit on me to understand who I was and who I am and where I come from in regards to me knowing that I'm an Israelite, me knowing that I'm God's chosen. And, it is, and it's bigger than just 
that name Israelite because when you say that name Israelite, it's a negative connotation on that name. Like knowing that you are Israelite is knowing that the Most High favors you and you've been taught lies about the Heavenly Father because we live in a world full of fucking lies and deception because it's been prophesied that way. But we got to wake up. We got to be serious about this shit. We got to be stern faced. We can't be on some la la land shit thinking that everything is just going to be peachy for the rest of eternity. It's not going to be like that forever. It's going to be a great cataclysm. It's going to be wars. So called black men is going gonna, is gonna, to um, be one again. We're going to come back together and, and fight this fight. It's not going to be a divide amongst our people like it is, even though it's not so much of a divide. But over the course of time, black people are going to start coming together. Things are going to like like the truth is going to start really being in our face, even though it's in our face now because we have the spiritual eye to discern and decipher. But for the most part, more and more people are going to start to see it. More and more people are going to start to be privy to the real skinny about the world that we live in. Not a lot of people are caught up yet into the real skinny in the world. They're you know, they going to continue to keep living their life. But, you know, in order for a prophecy to be fulfilled, the Most High has to continue to gather his elect. I don't think the Most High has finished gathering his elect yet. You still got more people that's, that's waking up to this understanding. American, you don't have a lot of time to play with the lives and the destiny of a people that God has chosen for himself. We are that people. We are the real children of Israel. When I leave you today, the calamities are going to get stronger because God wants America to let us go. That's a fact. And the Most High wants America destroyed. America is going to be destroyed. The Most High is going to come and send his son to destroy this place. Whether people want to believe it or not. Whether people want to laugh at that or scoff at that or, or whatever. The Most High is going to destroy and destruct the earth because it's defiled. The earth is defiled. It's full of wickedness and sin and iniquity. That's what it's about. A bunch of deception. A bunch of lies. All these Religions that's beginning to be more and more influxual in regards to people conforming to these religions. Because prophecy has to come to fulfillment. The more and more religions, the more and more sin. Because religion is sin. The more and more push of homosexuality and lesbianism and LGBTQPACT, whatever. All that stuff is all based in the fact that prophecy has to come to fulfillment. So we seeing all these things because it's all signs of the times. It's all an insign of what's coming. So we have to be prepared for the affliction. So-called black people, so-called black man, who is the head. You must understand that the time is coming, man. And, and you got to let go of that atheist element. You have to let go of that, that atheist mindset where you, where you just don't believe in nothing. You got to believe that there's a God. You got to believe that there's a grand architect that's controlling all of this stuff. There has to be an understanding that there's an omnipotent force that's controlling everything. You can't just think that this shit is just happening. Like, this is all happening based off of the spirit of the Heavenly Father. You could say stuff like, oh, like, you, like people, they say they don't believe in God, right? But you believe in love. You can't see love. I don't believe in it because I can't see it. But you can't see love. You can't see happiness. You can't feel happiness. It's intangible. The spirit is intangible, but it's the truth. It's, it, it's a fact. It's real. It's really real. And, and, and one of the main things, one of the most simple things that we use to validate the Bible is prophecy. If you could point out prophecies, then that gives validation to the Bible. You can't say the Bible is, is, is fake or, or bullshit if... Certain prophecies come to fulfillment. That's letting you know that the Bible is real. Like Job 9 and 24 says, The earth is given unto the hand of the wicked. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. Who are the judges? The judges are God's people. What does judge mean? It means God. It means power. 
Psalms 82 and 6 tells you, ye are gods, meaning ye are judges, because the so-called black man was set up to be a judge on the earth. Now, during the time of iconoclasm, which was the Renaissance period, they painted pictures of our people, ancient icons who were in Europe, who, who ruled in Europe, who had dominionship in Europe. We got our um, dominionship and our rulership conquered by the whites who came from the Russian steppe and the Caucasus Mountains. And basically, what they did was they painted images of our people, ancient icons, Russian icons. They painted those images white, whitewashing. That's where the prophecy comes in when you read Job 9 and 24, where it says, He, he um, covereth the faces of the judges thereof. You feel what I'm saying? He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. So-called Jesus Christ was a judge on the earth. He was, he was here to he was set up to be a priest and a prophet on the earth. He was a judge. He was a God. He was power. He was, he was powerful. Those, all those things are synonymous. And what did they do in, 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 in the 1300s, during the time of iconoclasm, during the rebirth, the Renaissance period? What did they do? They painted pictures of black people and they turned them white. Hence, whitewashing. Job 9 and 24. 1 Maccabees 3 and 48. So, it's un so we have to understand that if prophecies came to fulfillment, which were from the Bible, then that lends credence to the Bible. Which was not written by a white man. <laughs> Like, come on, man. Stop being so simple. Not integrate us. Let us go and give us a good send-off. Now I have heard the groaning of the Israelites from the Egyptians holding slavery. And I have remembered my promise. Say unto the children of Israel. I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, and I will rid you out from under their bondage, and I will redeem you with stretched out arm, and you shall know that I am the Lord.